Hi, how you doing? Um, I'm going to talk in this video and probably in quite a few videos from now on a little bit about MMA and its relationship with HEMA, what people that do MMA might be able to learn from those of us that do HEMA and what those of us that do HEMA can learn from MMA. Um, I'm peripherally involved in MMA I train with some very skilled fighters, uh, some very successful fighters. We're talking international class fighters, we're talking British, European champions, uh, we're talking people that kickbox on the international stage, we're talking about top level grapplers and wrestlers. But that's, that's aside, this, this particular video has been spurred predominantly by the adoption of a single sponsorship deal for clothing by the UFC. Um, I don't know if you're a fan of UFC, whether you watch it. Um, if you are, you'll probably be aware, even if it's only peripherally, that all the fighters, fairly recently, have been turning up wearing the same gear, the same Reebok UFC branded gear. Um, and I think it's, I think it's horrific. I think it has completely destroyed the heart of UFC and it's showed them to be out for nothing more than financial gain. It's not about the fighters, it's not about the fighting, it's about making money because that's the only possible explanation. Every fighter that was in the UFC had a sponsorship deal. And let's not forget that the cut men also had sponsorship deals. And they have been forced to wear UFC branded Reebok produced gear because the UFC has signed a sponsorship deal. So instead of the fighters getting their own sponsorships and being able to kind of show their personality through their attire, through their sponsorship, through the whole presentation of them as a fighter coming to the cage, that's no longer possible. Everybody has to turn up wearing the same crappy UFC branded stuff. And let's be honest, it's not even very nice. You can tell that someone in the headquarters at the UFC has gone, and do you know what? A lot of folk wear tap out gear because it's kind of associated with mixed martial arts. Let's create a brand to try and bring money in from that market. And you can't really blame them for doing it, but there are a couple of things I think that they've done that are quite damaging. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, they've taken away that kind of spirit of, of the fighters being independent. When, when the UFC started, and in the very early UFC competitions, it was kind of pitched as a martial art against martial art. So it was karate against jiu-jitsu or boxing against sumo or whatever it was. And the whole point was that for years we've been arguing about which martial art is best and now we had an opportunity to show which martial art was best. If you've followed it for a while, clearly you know that grappling wins. More on that in another video. Um, but what that allowed people to do was turn up in a gi with a black belt or turn up with a boxing glove, or turn up wearing, wearing anything they wanted, something that showed them as an individual and showed them as a fighter, and that has gone. Everybody turns up wearing the same corporate uniform and fights in a ring, and it, it shows that we've moved from this different martial arts competing against each other through to a kind of generic mix of martial arts, and everybody is the same. Now clearly that's not true. You watch some of the fighters and they have a real flavour to the, the way they fight. But that's getting fewer and, and, and further between. It's, it's harder to find those fighters that are clearly from a branch of, of martial arts. And I think that the UFC is partly to blame for that. Now, from their point of view, they're looking out for their bottom line, and absolutely. But it's short-sighted, I think, to damage your business in the long term in order to make money in the short term. And I think the UFC was probably bringing in enough money that they didn't need to do this to survive. 
Um, the second thing, and any video on the UFC sponsorship deal with Reebok would not be complete without mentioning Stitch. Um, if you've watched any UFC fights, you will have seen this man. He is a legendary cut man. He worked for many, many years with the UFC, creating a program for training cut men to be able to get involved in mixed martial arts. And he, he's a real character. And he's been paid a very, very small amount of money by the UFC to do this job. But that wasn't a problem because he was getting a lot of publicity, he was getting exposure, and he had his own sponsorship deals, and they were bringing him in a pretty good amount of money, and rightly so. He's hugely skilled, and he has saved many, many fights. Um, one in particular, but we're going to talk about that in another video, because that has some reference to Ben Ockle Boxing. And, and that's the Robbie Lawler title defence that happened very recently. Uh, but effectively, the UFC central contract for sponsorship deal involved both the fighters and the cutmen. They all had to wear UFC branded equipment. The fighters were financially compensated for losing their sponsorship. The cutmen weren't. Now, Stitch, Stitch Duran, I think his surname is. I've only ever seen it written down. I could be pronouncing it wrong, so I'm just going to call him Stitch. Um, he tweeted that he was unhappy with this. He mentioned that he thought it was unfair for the UFC to take away his ability to make money from his, his job without in some way recompensing him for that financial loss. And because he said that, he was fired. The UFC effectively got rid of one of their most skilled, one of their most loyal, and one of their most instantly recognisable employees simply because they disagreed with a, an action that the UFC had taken, play, taken. And I think that shows more than anything that the UFC is not about the people in it. It's about the people at the top making money. And they will screw over anyone along the way if it makes them some money. So I'm very disappointed. I really am. Um, I'd love to say I'm not going to watch the UFC anymore. If I did say that, it would probably be a lie. Um, but I certainly feel a lot less strongly about the UFC. I feel much more negatively towards them. Um, I'm certainly going to be trying much harder to watch 1FC, um, to watch Bellator, to watch all the other fight um, organisations out there. It's harder to watch them because they're not on mainstream television as often. But Bellator is starting to be. So, UFC, shame on you. Um, anyway, I'll shut up now. I'm going to talk a little bit more about MMA, we're going to talk about some fights and we're going to talk about some aspects of how early Regency bare knuckle boxing reflects in some of the things that are done and we're going to talk a little bit about why it is that the gloves in the UFC are damaging the fighters and probably how the UFC can, can do something about that. Anyway, thanks for listening, I hope I've not bored you too much and I'll see you around.